Hello there and welcome to episode 11 of Adventures in Knitting with Jen. I am in the backyard and the kids are around so you may hear them. Uh, just, it is what it is. <laughs> there's one! <laughs> and there's a new girl! Oh yeah, this is Ruby. Mwah. You see me on a lot of them. <laughs> Hello there. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Adventures in Knitting with Jen. Take two. Uh, <laughs> it was just not gonna work upstairs, outside with my nephews and nieces, as you have seen. <laughs> um, so yes, I'm downstairs in the basement. It's a little quieter. Um, although you might hear some pounding because, well, we're in the basement. Um, all right, well, if this is your first time here, uh, my name is Jen, and this is my little knitting podcast, little visual journal, more like, <laughs> where I talk about what I'm making, uh, finished objects, works in progress, and yeah, some natural dyeing, which happens only in the summer. So yes, <laughs> this is what I'm wearing, is my finished object, and that is the Stream Align Tank by Two of Wands, and yeah, I really like it. It is, you just knit two exact um, pieces and sew them together with some Fisherman's Rib down the middle to give it a little more detail, which I really like, and yeah, it's a little cold today, so throw on a little cardigan, you're good to go. It is silk and linen, so perfect perfect for summer um yeah I last year I bought all kinds of neutral yarn and even though I personally do love color a lot so but I'm glad to have a few neutral pieces in my wardrobe now so I'm happy that I bought it it took only two skeins of yarn which is amazing and I have two more that I can do something with um with this material yeah that's my only finished object I am still working on the two head scarves, I guess you could call them, that I started a few weeks ago, and, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, uh, yeah, working slowly away on them, I have kind of been focusing on this, so I haven't got as much done on them as I would have liked, but it is what it is, so, the first one, I'll tangle up here. The sole wrap. And I have gotten quite a bit more done. It does take a long time for me because it is a 12 um, row repeat. And so yeah, and you gotta follow along for the lace little part, which you can't really see here. Um, but it is beautiful yarn. It is silk from Red Brick Knitwear. And yeah, I have figured out that every 12 row repeat take is a one and a half inches and I need 30 inches. I'm at 10 right now, so 20 more to go. And then I will, so I figured it out. If I do one repeat a day, I can have it done in two weeks. We'll see, but I am excited to have it done because I think it's gonna look, oh yeah, kind of a retro vibe, which I really like. So yeah, I'm excited to have it done. I was gonna give up, because I was like, oh my gosh, this is gonna take so long, but I persevered and I'm glad I did. It will take me, it'll be worth it when it's done. So the other head the scarf that I was working on, I think it's called the Anita. And this is really soft, beautiful yarn. I think it's alpaca and cotton. I don't have to check, but it's really soft. And the summer yarn, this is like back when I was buying all these neutral colors. But I, yeah, like I mentioned before, it's light fingering and there's just no way I'm making anything like a real tank top with, or a shirt in light fingering that will just take forever and a day so head scarf it is held double and in this bag which i absolutely love 
by Jezebel B. And you just throw it on your arm and then you can knit. And yeah, fantastic. So, life news. I think I mentioned previously that we were, I was going to Niagara Falls with two good friends. Well, we decided, no, let's go to Vegas after all. <laughs> so we, um, yeah, we, some of our flights hadn't got canceled and our room, we still had a room. So we're like, let's do it. So yeah, I'm going to Toronto on Monday and Tuesday we're flying to Vegas. So this is going to be my Vegas project. <clears throat> because it's easy, I don't have to think about it. It's just seed stitch and a nice little bag while I'm waiting in line for three hours during to get through customs and on the plane and everything. I'll just have this with me, knitting away, and hopefully I can get a good chunk of it done <clears throat> because it's a huge square, basically. So yeah, those are two whips from a while ago and so, every time I finish a project, I just get the urge to cast on something else. So I finished this yesterday morning and cast on two things yesterday. I, uh, this is, sorry if you're hearing upstairs. <laughs> uh, um, poor little Truey, my little baby nephew. He's got, he's a gassy. Join the club. It's a redhead thing apparently. Did you know that? Uh, it's part of our, <clears throat> um, the reason that we have red hair is a genetic mutation and that comes with some other things and one of them is excessive gas. Fun times. Another one is a high tolerance for pain, which means <clears throat> not pain so much um, medication. Like when we go to the dentist, we need two or three shots in order to get knocked out. <laughs> Anesthesia doesn't work as well on us. All right, little redhead facts. So this is my naturally dyed yarn. It is worsted. Knit Picks is where I buy all my plain yarn. And the yellow was sumac, which I wasn't really a fan of because I already have so much yellow. I'm like, I don't need any more. But then I dyed with matter and I was like, let me see what would happen if I mixed it. And I really like it. It's like a peachy, peach and yellow, which I think goes really well together. And it's looking like this. It's striping a lovely, like really well. It's I think every two rows I get a peach. Yeah, this is a free pattern from Pearl Soho. It's just a super, like, it's gonna be a really thick ribbed, not completely ribbed, but like the brim is really big. So it'll be nice and warm, especially since it is worsted. Yeah, so. That won't take me that long. I just wanted to see what it was gonna look like knit up and I'm really happy with that so far. And then I decided I needed a pair of socks. I haven't knit a pair of socks all month. So I had this skein from Die For You. It was part of a kit with Ginger Snap that where you bought like a little kit and it came with a bag from Ginger Snap that and um, it was all a theme. We got some stitch markers and got the yarn. It was all Star Wars themed because I love Star Wars. So this is called Rebels, Droids, and Darth. And started it last night so you can see. <laughs> I'll put a little video of my nephew's guessing. And then you can see why I also had to come downstairs to pop guess because it got a little crazy. <laughs> I love it. I love them. I'm going to miss them so much. But yes, so here we go. Chewbacca, Yoda, and then the next one is black and red for Darth Maul. You can see some gold in there, and that's going to be 3 CPO. And then there's some white and orange for BB-8. So these socks are going to be a little long because I want to see all of the, the repeats. It looks like it's every four rose it's switching colors so yeah there's my sock project in another one of my bags so i've had these for a while i just kept them here at home i might bring them back with me though it's another over the wrist and this one is perfect for um socks 
just folds one skein perfectly. Yeah. And that is all of my knitting and works in progress um, that I have been working on <laughs> this past two weeks. Yeah. Ooh. Well, that was fun. <laughs> I guess that's time to uh, say goodbye <laughs> and stick around for part two and you will see my natural dyeing, what I've done. It's fun. It's so fun. All right. This is Star Wars socks. So what do you think this color is for? Uh, hmm. Green. Who is brown in Star Wars? Um, Chewbacca? Yeah, Chewbacca. And who is green? Baby Yoda. Yeah, and then this one is black and red. Who do you think that's for? Uh, I think it's for like Darth Vader. It, close, it is for Darth Maul. Who's, Who's Darth? Darth Maul? Oh, you guys haven't seen that movie yet. Well, Alright, so... We have a new guest right here. You've yeah. probably seen me. Shippy! First time on the podcast. Wanna say hi? I tractors. You love tractors, yeah. What are we doing, Mav? We're mashing bugs. Yeah. This is a bug, I'll show you. They're really small. They, you're probably wondering, they, are they actually bugs? Yes, they are. But tiny bugs. Alright, and we are mashing them in a mortar and pestle. That's what that thing's called. And we're making them into a fine powder. And then we're going to add them to a pot, add some water. And Okay, so I have started the dye bath for the cochineal. I think that's how you say it. Um, and I'm doing an exhaust bath this time, which means I put about 20 grams of the bugs in the pot with about three inches of water. I let it boil for 30 minutes or simmer, boil, cook <laughs> 30 minutes and then I strained it into another pot and then I took the bugs, put it back into another pot and added more water and boiled it again just to get the most out of it. A little goes a long way with this bug. I did die with it last year and I got like a bright pink which was fun. Um, I am not getting pink this year. Maybe because I'm doing the exhaust bath. Uh, I'm going to dry, dye about 400 grams um, today. And one of those skeins is a non-super wash worsted, which is really hard to get color, a uh, strong color, which I think I mentioned before. I um, The trick seems to be letting it soak for a long time so it's like what is it three o'clock now and it's been soaking since about nine this morning so it's good and wet and I decided to let it sit in the dye bath um while I'm working on the second um uh, exhaust bath just to let it soak and get some color and check it out So that's pretty exciting. That is like a, I don't know, that's a deep, deep purple, which is really pretty and definitely not at all what I got last year. I definitely got a pink last year. I did not test my pH levels first. I should have done that. Um, but yeah, that's exciting. So I have two skeins of DK I'm going to add in here and then another skein of Superwash Worsted and we'll just see what kind of colors we get. Hello and welcome to part two where I'm going to talk about the natural dyeing that I have done for the last two weeks and um, you've seen that I had the boys helping me. Cochineal, I think that's how you say it, cochineal. Uh, bugs that I bought them from Love of Color. She's out of Toronto. You can find her on Etsy and they had fun um, mashing them up and you get a lovely pink. I was, you'll see in the video, I was like, oh, it's gonna be dark purple. Yeah, no. By the time it was finished simmering in the pot and I washed it, I got lovely pinks. So this is 
a skein of non-superwash worsted. So non-superwash, I mean, this is sticky. Like I did wash it before I dyed it, but you can still feel like the lanolin in it. It's so it doesn't hold the color as well, but I love it still. It's gorgeous, a gorgeous light pink. It's very beautiful. Um, this would make a very warm hat. Um, yeah, so that was my non super wash. You can see I left some, it's a little variegated too. Non super wash worsted. And then super wash worsted. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous pink. Um, yeah, lovely. From Bucks. Then I dyed two skeins of DK just so that I could have, you know, if I wanted to make something. I have two skeins. I mean, this is even enough to make a top. And Gort, and if you look, pretty similar. Pretty similar color. So, yeah. Beautiful. All right, well, then I decided I'm gonna mess around with the pH and raise it up. The pH of my water for this uh, was six, which is pretty neutral, close to neutral. And then I put some ammonia in the water and made a pH of 10. And look at the difference. Like gorgeous, gorgeous light pink color, beautiful. Like this is the pink that I go to if I'm gonna wear pink, it's this color. <laughs> Not so much this one, um, but yeah, beautiful. So next summer I may play around with that and just dye up a bunch, add some ammonia, we'll see. Then I did a logwood, which is a bark. I also got it from Love of Color. And look at this purple, gorgeous, what? This is Superwash Worsted, very dark purple. And then again, I did where I dyed up two skeins of DK. There's a bit of a difference between them. I Well, you can see this one seems to be a lighter than this one, so I'm not sure why. I just didn't get enough. It is crowded in the pot, I'm not sure, but still. Beautiful, beautiful purples. So. And I went to Upper Canada Village. They were saying how they didn't waste anything back in the day and they saved the dye bath of their things that they were dyeing and mixed them together to see what new colors they could get. I was like, ooh, I'm gonna do that. So I saved the dye bath from the cochineal and added it to the logwood. What? And I got these. These are probably my favorite because they're closer to that like lighter pinky purple that I personally love. This is DK, and this is worsted. Like, absolutely gorgeous. So I'll show you the difference. Yeah, so these two colors mixed together made this one. Which I mean, it, you can see it's kind of like this color, but more purple, which is more my fave. This is, I'm like, next year, I just wanna maybe make a sweater quantity of this for myself, maybe. And this is gorgeous too, like a pinky purple. So yeah, that was my little adventures in dyeing for the last two weeks. I had a lot of fun playing around with that. I am packing up the dye shop slowly because it's almost August and I'm getting ready to go back up north. I head back up. 22nd? 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 August 22nd. And I kind of switch gears now and start thinking of lesson plans and all that kind of stuff starting in August. Um, not to mention I have travel plans, etc. I do have two more projects that I'm going to work on and hopefully both of them will give me other kinds of pink. So the first part of the summer was all yellow and the last part's all pink and purple. <laughs> I have avocado pits that I'm still saving that I'm going to try and my sister in Toronto has a Japanese maple tree that I'm going to see what happens because apparently you can get a pink color from that too. So 
yeah, those are the only two projects I'm going to work on, I think, for the rest of the summer. Then I all pack up shop. But I really hope that you have enjoyed coming along with me this summer and seeing the different things that I have made. And, you know, feel free to give it a like. <laughs> I feel awkward saying that, but... Um, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, no more dyeing, natural dyeing. Because I can't do it up in up where I work. It's just not ventilated enough, and I don't just it wouldn't be. I don't have access to all the different things that I would down here. Um, but next summer, I have different projects that I want to have and play around with. I'm trying to get some more greens. <laughs> That'll be my project next summer. Try to get some green. All right. Well, take care and. Uh, I'll see you in two weeks. Not quite sure. <laughs> this is the part where it gets sketchy. I'm not quite sure when I'm going to be able to record again. So, but I'll see you when I see ya. Take care. Bye.